Hello everyone, Neil Tappin here from Golf Monthly and welcome to Fox Hills Golf Club and this video on the seven things every golfer must do to play well this winter. We're going to cover all the different scenarios that you'll face on the golf course as the ground conditions get a little bit wetter and we'll also talk about things like how to adjust your yardages when you're playing in the cold. Now the advice in this video comes from Golf Monthly Top 25 coach Clive Tucker. He offers some really simple and effective advice that will really help you in all of these different scenarios. And the last thing I'll say to you is that this video is being brought to you in partnership with Pin Collection. They have a great range of garments to help you play better in the cold, in the wet this winter. So if you are interested, we'll leave some links below so you can take a look at what they have to offer. Uh, but let's head out now onto the golf course here at Fox Hills and take a look at the seven things every golfer must do to play well this winter. So one of the big challenges we all face in the winter is because the golf course is so wet and temperatures are a bit colder, the golf course effectively plays longer. Mm -hmm. Yes, it does. And I think there's a tendency, whenever the golf course plays longer, to try and hit the ball harder. Indeed. Is that fair? Is that a fair thing uh, for, to say? Uh, uh, me included, I'm sure. Yeah, you just kind of think, oh, I've got to hit this hard. And then you're not likely to use your normal rhythm or speed or tempo. And then suddenly it goes pear-shaped. You yeah. know, the, the, so if you watch the guys on tour, the, the sort of the, the magic number probably is around about 80% of their energy. They're hitting That's about 80%. 80 now they can go 100. Some can, particularly now one or two can go really fast. Yeah. Uh, and most of them lose clubhead speed when they go to 100. Most of them lose it. Right. Cause because they just they... lose the timing. And it just doesn't, you know, this doesn't sequence out to the clubhead, the energy don't produce it at the right time don't expand it out to the head. So that's that eight is a magic number. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. So, so rhythm becomes even more important in winter, even more important when you need to carry the ball that little bit further. Mm -hmm. So Clive, it begs the question, how can people make establish them. the right rhythm Indeed, and then yeah. maintain it when they're Pre on the Pretty golf straightforward. And there's a little cheat to it at the end as well. So when you're having a particularly good round or particularly good practice session where you're hitting a number of shots in a row, stringing a few together and think, well, this feels really good. You, give, you want to give your rhythm a number from 10, not how good it is, but what the number actually is. 10 is as fast as you can go, one is as slow as you can go. And I've obviously I've imparted this stuff and discussed this with many, many clients. And it, the popular number feels like about six or a seven. Right, okay. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, but if, you know, my six and your six could be completely different. But if, if that's what we're feeling and, it, you know, we're understanding it that way, that's good. Now, one of the best things you'll ever do is take that number to the course, ever because that's a good chance of your me mechanics working to their optimum. Right. And that gives you the optimum carries, you don't need to change it. Right. Now the little trick here is to practice to either go with a six, but sometimes another way to look at this is if you're really, if you're really having a fantastic round and you're feeling a bit agitated and a bit anxious, you know, you're running out of steam at the end, or there's adrenaline flowing, that six will go to a six and a half, seven, eight. Quite easily. Now the trick is yeah. to practice a five. So if you're normally a six, practice a five. Now when you hit the five out here with adrenaline, it will go to the six. Right, fine. So you kind of can, there's a way of cheating but controlling that six if it's the magic number for yeah, you. Yeah, and I guess it just requires that bit of awareness, doesn't yeah. it? That bit of self-awareness to understand. Practice it first. Do you know, I'm starting to get a bit Need to slow here. it down, yeah, need to slow it down, yeah. So windy conditions, it can get short and fast. So you just got to feel, okay, it's got to, that's an, a rhythm thing, length thing or speed thing. We do work on those things separately and you can control it. Lovely. Mm. Yep, that'll do. Very nice. Whenever you're playing golf in the winter and it's a little bit wet underfoot and a little bit colder, there are quite a few shots that become that little bit tougher. I'd say this is one of them. Mm. So this is a sort of a 60 yard pitch shot, Clive. Mm -hmm. And the tendency for a lot of golfers, probably myself included, would to catch, the, catch this one a little bit heavy. Mm -hmm. Um, especially, as I say, when it's a little bit wet, a little bit yeah, muddy yeah, underfoot. Yeah, How yeah. do you stop yourself from doing that? I think um, there's a point to make there, actually. A lot of when you're playing in the dry, you know, we, you know, we're not discussing that, you actually can hit frat an inch behind as long as it's shallow and still hit a pretty good shot. Right, OK, you can get away with a you slightly can, strike. You can, you can, but here you can't. So you, you've got to be making pretty good contact with the ball. Um, I, I, the common mistakes I see people make is they swing it too far, too right. long for the shot, and then have to quit on it. Right, yeah. 
you kind of want to negate that by sh reducing the length of the backstroke. Okay. So you have to commit to a finish. Right. Uh, as long as the board is playing fairly central and the body is moving to a nice full finish, chances are, if you're regularly a decent contact, you know, you're, you're going to get away with it and hit it pretty well. So are you, are you saying that you should swing shorter back and then through to a normal Absolutely length right. finish? So yeah. not the same distance no, outside, uh, but actually through no. to a full finish? If you're prone to hitting it heavy, then I would be committing to a finish. If you're swinging this far back, you know, everything's set, the wrist is set, the lag is set, you know, the ability for the arms to drop down and create their own speed and get carried through the torso will work very well. Okay, yeah. so we, we've spoken in a few of these other uh, sections about the ball going a fraction further back in the stance. Smidge, yeah. Is that the same here? Is it, it the same it, sort of process? It is, yeah, definitely. Um, play it mid stance, this would be pitching from, yeah, definitely. If you're there anyway, then I wouldn't play it further back. Okay. But you just make sure that you road, you know, you get to a finish, and it's kind of a cheat because if you're if the ball is centered, and I definitely finish in my, you know, as I you know, get some body pressure moving left and rotating, I'm by moving slightly that way, I'm bringing the low point or where the club interacts with the ground a little bit more ahead of the ball than behind the ball. Okay. So it really ought to all those things that. Are, negate the, the poor contact, help not make it a, a, a bad contact or hit particularly de heavy, duffy on wet ground. It should really help. Yeah. But you're not, can we just be clear, you're not suggesting that people have a big sort of weight no, shift towards the target, but not just a natural... All. Yeah, if, if, you know, if my body starts, my body is balancing here and I open up and move to, that's enough shift of everything to encourage ball before ball and turf at the same time versus turf ball. Yes. Definitely, yeah. Okay then, go on then, Clive. Halfway back, commit to the finish. Should come up okay. <laughs> because I took, Very you know, good. I took the speed off by gripping. Every inch you grip down, you're taking off about five yards. So a few minor tweaks there. For whenever you're faced with one of those wet lies in the winter, you need to hit a short pitch shot like this one. Put Clive's tips into play. It should really help you out. Right, Clive, so holding out from close range in the winter becomes a little bit more tricky, obviously, when the greens start to get a bit wetter, maybe a little bit more bobbly because of the natural sort of playing conditions changing. Yeah. Now, that's not an issue we're facing here today at Fox Hills. The greens here are absolutely perfect, but if they were a little bit longer, a little bit more wet, a little bit more bobbly, mm. how do people confront that particular challenge? I think it's mostly with speed and you've got to aim a little bit straighter because of that. Okay. So, the, okay, the hole gets, we can, we can kind of, uh, helps overcome the, the, the poor rolling potential, but, but the hole gets a little narrower because it's, it's going in a fraction faster, not crazy fast, but a fraction faster. So you've got to aim a bit straighter, which makes sense anyway. Yes. You know, it's not yeah. a bad thing. So, Begs the question, how do you train yourself to get into that mindset? Right, so, you know, as you can tell, we're, we're in a certain time of year here where we can't touch the flags, unfortunately. Um, what I would be suggesting uh, would be to put the thin end of an iron club in front of the hole, something like that. Uh, and what's got to happen, that's, that's a hot, an obstacle we have to overcome. So I'll put it this way to the side of it. So excuse me, I'm going to miss it purposefully, of course, onto the left here. <laughs> Uh, so if, if you norm, hit your normal hole out speed, that would go in the front edge, but it's not very positive. And you can see even on that little putt, it actually breaks quite a lot because it's just dribbling. Yeah. So the drill is this, you need to put the, this in front of the hole, obviously no flag sticking in it. And what you're trying to do is hit it hard enough that it bounces and it would bounce in the centre of the cup. So you've got to hit it, in. but it'll go straight in. And also the camera should be able to pick up that it's rolling straighter whilst it's doing it. Great. If you hit it too hard, and there was no, you did this with, a, uh, with no flag in, it actually would bounce the hole. We don't want to do that, that's too hard. It might go in even at that speed, but it has to be dead in the centre. So you're just trying to pop, just bounce them in the middle of the cup. You mentioned earlier, I think, uh, you were not a good putter. No, well, I, I tend to have sure get a that. little bit defensive on the right. greens, and yeah, the ball yeah. does tend to sort of yeah. so you know, it, dribble towards the hole at times. Even in good, if you're prone to being slightly defensive and slightly off speed, even on good greens, it's still going to come off the line too fast. So if you're concerned with your holding out speed on great greens, this is still a super good drill. Um, if you can get them to bounce in the middle, then take the take the take the, the, the club out of the way and knock them in at the same speed. You'll see, wow, that doesn't look that fast, but it's very positive. Yeah. 
good holding out speed, yeah, great. Yeah, it's a really good tip that. Really simple and effective way of training your, your mind to get into a slightly more, as Clive said, positive mindset to help you hold out from close range this winter. One thing every golfer is going to need to do in the winter, Clive, is reassess how far they hit the ball. So you should should know, far, know how far you hit the ball in warm conditions when you're playing a lot in the summer. Mm. But in the winter, it does change, doesn't it? How's the best way of kind of recalibrating yourself and thinking about how far to hit the ball? Well, you made a good point there. Most people should know, not everybody does, but you really should do a gapping session somewhere with some launch monitors or you know, the, the bushnels or whatever it is that you can, you can monitor things uh, to see how it actually does go. And then you, at least you've got a chance of working back from that. I suppose a general rule of thumb, you're going to lose a club. Right, okay. Golf ball's colder, shafts are colder, you're not so athletic, your body's not warmed up, there's a matrix there, you're slightly slower, it's going to go shorter. So I think a really good start point is hit a five instead of a six. Right, okay. Yeah, right. That, something like that. An alternative is you can use a harder golf ball in the winter because it will fly further and it will still stop because the greens are soft. That's yes. something to consider. You might just lose half a club. The majority of the time, is this fair to say? Now, you might be saying that I'm making this up, but I'd say on the whole, <laughs> yeah. there's more trouble short of the green than there is long. So if you're going to make oh, any mistake, uh, it's you probably don't, you don't want to come up short. Uh, absolutely right. I mean, you don't get many traps at the back, mostly. They're mostly guarding the entrance of the green. Yes. So let's say I'm going to laser this pin and it's 180, and I think I need to hit my five iron 180 and hit it great. And, it, but, and I hit, well, I can't hit that any better. It's pitched seven yards short. I think, mm, actually, I've hit that 173 and I would make a note of that right. in case there's a new pattern emerging. Yeah. So I'd be checking that all the time. Yes. Many amateurs wouldn't, but not many all, but, yeah. but, but you should. And it's important to, 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 know, to know also that you're, you're making a note of your, it's really your Current carry yardage, it's not your... No, it's the carry yard as you want. So this shot here, par three, 16th hole here at Fox Hills, you've got 200 yards, yeah. Clive. Yeah. So talk through the process before you hit it. Well, well it, it's, let's say it's cold here, so I'm going to hit one more. 200, I'm going to hit a very smooth rescue, which is going to fly about, should fly 200, 205. So I'm, I'm hoping it's going to be about the right club. In the warmer conditions, I would hit probably a four iron or a right. five iron even, let it, re let it release on the green. From this range, middle of the green's great. I'm yeah. not trying to hit it stone dead, you know. Yeah. Okay, go on then, then right. have, give it a go for us. Thank you very much. So there's a wee bit of wind off the left. Got a mark on the floor. Just as you said, slight fade, nice and smooth, and bouncing up there nicely. So it yeah. really is as simple as Clive says it is. You've got to rethink your yardages for the winter. You're not going to get quite the same distance. You're not going to get quite the same carry. And then when the ball hits the ground, more often than not, it's going to stick. You need to calibrate all of that into your calculations before you hit any shot out on the golf course. Okay, so wet lies in the bunker. Clive, this is a situation we're all going to face in the winter. It rains, the sand gets really compacted yeah. underfoot. It's hard pan because the, the air is sucked out of it. Um, so the, the, the bounce is going to be acting differently to that soil than a normal soft sand yeah. hitting three inches behind it. We can't do that. So if you hit three inches behind here with the with leading edge up to add because you've added loft, you're going to be thinning. 95% of those shots because it, it's result. not a great look into 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 a lip there. Yeah. So we need to strike closer to the ball. Okay. Oh, suddenly everyone's thinking, no, don't fancy that. Yeah. But well, you... there's a, only a little bit, not okay. like, you know, a, just a little bit, uh, with less bounce. So the face is going to be squarer. So we kind of want the almost the dig of the club. The less bounce almost wants to catch under the ball rather than. Bounce. It's going to come out the ground, don't need bounce because the, the, the planet Earth is going to push it out plenty well enough with hard ground. Okay. So we're going to make a couple of adjustments. Ball back, uh, don't change the stance. You, can, you could, I know some people stand slightly closer to make it more vertical, the swing plane slightly more vertical, which is, adds nicely to a square of face. Other than that, normal speed, normal technique, but you need to practice it a little bit. Okay, go on then, show us how it's done. All right, so this would be my normal one. Low hands, lots of loft, ball on my left heel. So I'm going to, ha going to get the square of face and bring it back just an inch in the, so the size of a golf ball back in the start, but swing it a la normal. 
and there she comes. Sure. So it's not going to change. Um, you know, I'm not changing my strike position. I'm bringing the ball back the size of a ball, right, which is okay, an fine. inch and a half. So as, as with a lot of your tips in this, Clive, mm. it, we're talking margins Minimum. here, but it actually does yeah. make a big difference, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. You don't have to go crazy with this stuff. You know, you don't need to change your technique. If you're a good bunker player, then it's going to be much easier. If you're a less comfortable bunker player, then you need to get some, some advice and get that organised and then make, just tweak it to make it more playable given the circumstances. As with everything with golf, the more practice you put in, the more you get used to these different scenarios out on the golf course, the better you're going to become at confronting them and dealing with them whenever you're faced with them. Right, so this one is probably, Clive, the most important one of the tips we're going to look at. Whenever you're playing golf in the winter, you're going to be faced with wet lies, you know, soft conditions underfoot. Clive, are there any things that people can do to help them prevent those kind of fat contacts, those, you know, not precise strikes that can end up costing distance. What, what should people be doing? What should people be changing? Well, they're focusing on, the, obviously, the contact of the ball is critical because, you know, you don't want any detritus or waters beginning between the face and the ball as much as, 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 much as you possibly can. Mostly, we'd play the ball fractionally further back if you are prone to fatting or hitting a bit heavy, right. or particularly if it's a wet, tight lie, then you really do have to focus on making contact with the ball correctly. Uh, and it's going to be helpful to play the ball just a little bit back. One thing I would want to sort of mention is that people often think, OK, it's got to go back and they move it miles back. You know, you only need to make really, really small adjustments, frankly, from your normal setup or your normal sort of technique to so make those differences. What happens if you move it too far back? Well, you think of the sort of swing without getting too complicated in three dimensions. If I was to play the ball a long way back, yes, it guarantees I'm going to hit the ball before the ground, but it's blooming steep. And the other thing is, from this direction, the more back I play it, the more to the right the club's travelling whilst I'm going to make contact. So there's a payoff there. Yes, fine. So, so on this hole, those bunkers up the right become very much in play if you move absolute, it too far back. Uh, yeah, so, so I would be, uh, you've got to do one or two things. You need to gently, in practices of course, under provision of your teaching pro, you can close the face a little at address or not and just aim left and allow it to push, okay. which is what I would recommend because it's just easier. The controlled push. Yeah, it's a bit of a polite push, <laughs> but it's good contact. Talk us through exactly how you'd hit it, how far back are we going, what's the normal address, vers uh, address position versus how you'd change okay, it. Okay, so if I can demonstrate it here, say if this is my kind of regular type seven iron setup, so the ball is perhaps two balls inside my left heel, so that on the left heel as a neutral type position, the ball is kind of one to one and a half back from that, then I might just literally only move it that amount. Right. So it's half a ball, and that makes a couple of degrees change to the path and a couple of degrees change to the, to the delivery angle of attack, as it were. Right. So okay. keep it as simple as you can. So you'd only make those small things. So an av on average, a seven iron's probably got a descending angle of around about four, three, four degrees-ish. Now, if you, if you go two balls back, that's going to go to eight or nine. Now, that's just too steep. The, the, right. the, that, you know, you could hurt yourself if you do that. Right or the ground, although it's soft, is going to still offer some resistance to that angle of attack. Really make small, small adjustments. I can't, I can't kind of emphasise that enough. Right, small adjustments, yep. normal swing. Normal that, swing. That leads me to say, you're going to have to hit this one for us, Clive. Okay. Now, I'll, I'll tell you that this is the first shot you've hit today. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. It's first thing in the morning. Mm -hmm. It is wet underfoot. Yep. What's Shows how it's done. See what happens. Come on, pro. <laughs> right, so I'm not going to reach the pin with this, but I'm going to aim a hair left of it, so hopefully it will push a little bit. Got my mark on the floor. Kind of get a one or two practice swings to kind of get a bit of a feel for it. So it's a normal setup. I'm just going to play it a little bit back. So it really sh should push a smidge. Very smooth. Lovely. But just a tiny cut. Lovely. So it did move a little that way, but you know, un I'm not unhappy with that. It was good contact, has had the ball back. Normal swing, allowing it to push a bit, but give you the contact with the angle of attack. There you go. Uh, some really simple and effective advice there uh, for how to overcome those scenarios when it's wet underfoot and you're looking for a good strike. So, Clive, this one is about shot selection around the greens. And for anyone who's competing this winter, you know, getting a good score together means choosing the right shots to play from different lies, mm. where it is tricky. You know, mm. around the greens, these short game shots can be quite tricky. What's the advice here? I think advice is to simplify it as much as possible. Do as little as possible. Less is more. Right. 
So rather than sort of get, you know, the, I see the young guys, aggressive, you know, aggressive players, get the 56 out, get the 64 out and just hammer it in the air and try and pitch it two feet away and stop it a foot. I mean, it's doable, but it's very tricky. You watch a good chip around the green, there's very little going on. So there's less hand action, there's more, the least amount of hand action you've got, the more stable the face is. And right. interestingly enough, the more the speed of everything becomes relative, it matches up. If I start to get volatile, yeah. that can look pretty, and it could look amazing, and it but it's it, it, yeah. it look incredible, yeah. and it's not not impossible to do. Just more challenging. The more predictable your action is, and the easier the contact, the more control the, of you have of the ball flight and the carry distance and the rollout distance, the better you're going to chip it. So I'd be dumping the 56 and thinking about a seven or anything straighter. As early as within reason, I can get it on the green and turn it into putt. There it is. When you talk about hand action, you're talking about the amount of uh, wrist hinge action. you have in, yeah, in the wrist. Yeah, you want to try it. You don't need any. Right, OK. From short shots, re really none. If it's a difficult line, you have to be steep, different matter. Normal line, as least as possible. Then there's less volatility. It's easy to control the pace now of yeah. the club head. Therefore, the distance it goes. If I've got a little mark on the ground, or I've kind of got something in my head there, when I'm making practice swings. Well, you're, you're thinking about pitching it somewhere. I, I, You've I'm got a mark pitch, somewhere. I, I'm going to mark in my head where, where I'm going to pitch this, and it really ought to work oh, pretty well. OK, fine. Pretty well. Now, that's interesting. I wonder how many people watching this will, when they chip, mm. have a specific landing spot in mind? Because mm -hmm. I'm not sure I do a lot of right. the time. It's just, I get caught up in technique and yeah, other things, I think. See, you know, obviously, I would encourage it, because because you're learning to control things. People often say to me, yeah, there's no feel in that. I say, oh, you know, if I've worked some luck, luck enough to work some very good players, I say, well, actually, I'd rather feel it. OK, but there's, OK, but if they had a mark in their head, they've still got to feel that. Yeah, it's still got to get it's it there, yeah. And I play with some incredibly good players with an unbelievable short game. It's a 50-50 split. They're kind of thinking about where to bounce it or they just have an overall feel for it. They're, but they're good, you know, they're just good at it. Yeah. But they're still trying to do as minimum as possible to, to produce a more accurate, a higher percentage of success rate. Yes, but the good tip for people like me and many of the people watching this would be have a very clear picture in your mind for where you're looking to land the ball. Uh, uh, it's and a then... great start point rather than just guessing. Guess, guessing is not a good strategy. <laughs> that sounds like a good uh, strap line for this video. <laughs> yeah. Go on then, Clive, have a, have a go at this okay, one. Okay, right. So I kind of, uh, I mean, uh, even from this range, I'd be picking a line to go over. Go on then, show us, show us where that line is. Okay, where that... the line, line now is probably just left of a piece of grass there, conspicuous bit of grass there. It's about three feet away. Never pick anything more than three feet away. Right. And never pick anything inside of a foot. It's just, you know, you need that 18 inch, two foot is about right to be able to see it rather than guess. Some people say, I'm gonna go out that divot over there, it's 20 yards away, it's just too, too far. Right, okay. Doesn't make any sense. So this one, the ball's slightly back in the stance, but only slightly right of centre. There's a little bit of lean on the shaft, but not much. Now, very, very passive hands. Yeah. The wrists feel like they're wooden. So if the, en the wrists aren't the engine, then the body is. Okay. So I'm gonna focus on making sure that my left shoulder just keeps moving. That, in that inherently stop a duff, and you're not even steep because there's no wrist action. Yes, so I'm just trying to get a feel, <laughs> just trying to get a feel for a little brush on the ground. That means the plane is good and the path is good. I'm picking my mark in my mind. I'm going to try and get a bit of a feel, put the two together. That hit my mark very close, very close. It's a misread, but the distance is delightful. I'm happy with that. So for me, it's 25% roll, 75 my, I've got three or four others in my head, but I'm going to use the easiest one I can. Less movement gets the job done. And you've left yourself with about three or four feet up the hill. It's the, by the, just looking at Clive do it, it's the simplest, easiest way to approach it. And if it's the simplest and easiest way to do it, chances are the results are going to be pretty good. So there you have it. That's our list of seven things every golfer must do to play well uh, this winter. Uh, if you've enjoyed the video, please do hit the like button and also uh, hit the pause button and let us know what you think of Clive's tips. Uh, which of those do you think will make the biggest difference to your game? And what are the challenges specifically that you face, do you think, during the winter? If you have any questions, we'd be interested to hear them and we'll get back to as many of you as we can. Uh, but that's it for now from Fox Hills. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.